What's up everybody? So I'm moving into a new accumulation cycle of training and that's what we're going to talk about today. Now if you like training like this, if you want to run faster, be a more explosive, stronger athlete, check out my online training group which is linked below. You get access to my Discord server and get workouts sent to your phone. So make sure to check that out. Now as far as an accumulation cycle, some of the things that change from an intensification cycle are you'll be using higher volumes of work, lifts will be more focused on increasing maximal strength, and essentially you use more work to cause an adaptation as opposed to using velocity or just pure intensity to cause an adaptation. This can help to increase work capacity, strength levels, endurance, and work capacity with regards to sprinting. So some of my goals with this cycle are to increase maximal strength. For a while, I focused on more mid-range strength work, so 60%, 70%, maybe up to 80%. And that's all well and good. I think it's good to introduce that work, also introduce some more power-oriented work earlier in the training year. But once you've developed the ability to move moderate loads pretty fast, then I think it's a good time to transition into moving heavy loads as fast as you can. Even though the bar velocities will be slow, we use heavy loads to increase force production, recruit a lot of high-threshold motor units, and by increasing maximal strength, you'll increase your capacity for explosive abilities. But if you never work on maximal strength, then all you're ever going to be able to do is reach your current potential for explosive strength and power output and all that, but you're never going to hit a new level of ability. So we want to use maximal strength to help improve our capacity for being explosive. And then when we transition back to an intensification cycle, we can use training that'll turn that maximal strength we've developed into explosive strength. Another thing I'll be doing is increasing the distance over which I sprint on some of the days that I'm out at the track. So for example, with my tempo workouts, those will progress from maybe 150s and 200s up to as far as 300 meters. I'll be introducing some speed endurance work at the end of some of my sessions and just in general trying to get my body used to running over a longer distance because I've spent many years simply focusing on speed and acceleration and I've hit a point where that is no longer going to cause very much adaptation because I'm so used to it. So I'm now increasing the strength of my training by adding in some longer sprinting I'm still going to be focusing a lot on speed and acceleration that's the core of a sprinters training program but if you don't expose yourself to longer duration efforts then your 200 meter performance is going to suffer and the end of your hundred is probably going to suffer as well so I'm going to be using longer sprinting in my program nothing crazy you know I won't be out running 600 meter sprints or anything like that but fast 150s slower 300s slower 200s and I think being so far away from the season this is a good time to start introducing that stuff. The other thing is countless elite sprinters around the world use longer runs in their earlier phases of the training year. So if it works for them, then it should probably work for me. And if all I ever do is the same thing that I've been doing, I can only expect to get the same results that I've been getting. And so this is one of the changes I plan to make in this accumulation cycle. This will help with glycolytic abilities, finishing the 200 better, finishing the 100 better, and setting me up to perform speed endurance work and special endurance work at a high intensity level. I also want to improve mobility, so hip mobility, shoulder mobility, because I tend to be stiff as an athlete. And if you want to run fast, you have to be able to get through all these ranges of motion very quickly and if you're restricted in your movement that's going to show up somewhere it may show up in the form of an injury it may show up in technique that looks a little weird but either way i plan to introduce some work that'll help improve my mobility and hopefully that will pair well with everything else that i'm doing now as far as some of the specific training adjustments i'm making i'm going to be using kaiser equipment with my strength training with kaiser equipment you can use air as a form of resistance so you don't have to deal with some of the downsides of mass-based resistance you can benefit a lot as an athlete because it allows you to really attack the movement. When you use air resistance, you're not dealing with momentum or inertia, so you'll have consistent resistance through the whole range of motion. You'll be able to attack the whole range of motion. You can drop fast in a squat, fire up all the way through the top of a squat without the bar flying off your back, and it allows you to load up to high resistance levels, but without feeling as much wear and tear on your body. I'm reintroducing higher volumes of short speed endurance training. So for example, Monday of this week, I did nine by 60 meters broken up into three sets of three. I also finished that workout with a 150 and did three by 30 meters prior to the 60s because I want to not only build up my glycolytic abilities, but I also want to build up my alactic energy system and have a bigger battery for when I go do sprints. So by doing high intensity sprints at a relatively high volume, that can help improve your ability to produce the energy needed for 60 meter, 80 meter, 100 meter sprints. And by doing them in higher volumes, the sprints may not be as fast because by the end of the workout, you're gonna start slowing down, but that sets you up to then do faster sprints later on in lower volumes 
volumes. So I'm introducing higher volumes of short speed endurance work into this cycle. My tempo workouts are gonna progress. So I've been doing extensive tempo over 150 and 200 meters, but I wanna progress the extensive tempo out to 300 meters simply because I just find that my general fitness abilities are not very good. It, I really slow down at the end of a slow 300. I might start out at 13 seconds or something like that, just cruising real easy through the first 100. Then through the second 100, you know, I feel good at the beginning, but I start to slow down at the end. And then the last 100 of that 300 is really quite slow. And if you want to run a fast 200, you should be able to run a slow 300 without any trouble. So considering the fact that I'm gassed after running three 300s, that tells me I need to do a little bit longer extensive tempo. And then I also will probably do some intensive tempo just for a short period of time. So that way I can bridge the gap between extensive tempo and then fast speed endurance and special endurance work. Another thing I'm experimenting with is micro dosing speed endurance training into my program. So for example, this week for two of my workouts, I started out with shorter sprints. Monday was 60 meter sprints. Wednesday was 40 meter sprints, but I finished both of those workouts with a fast 150. On Monday, I did it at about 90%, and then on Wednesday, I did it at 95%. So I'm gonna experiment with microdosing the speed endurance work at the end of a session, just to see, A, how does my 150 time change? I wanna track any changes in the flying 100, so from 50 to 150 meters, I wanna see that go down. Right now, I'm running about 10.5 over that flying 100, and if I could get down to 10.3, 10.2, or even 10.0, then that's gonna be a great sign for my 200, as well as for the end of the 100. If you think about it, the flying 100 of a 150, that's gonna help develop not only the back half of the 100, but also the middle of the 200. And I'd really like to see my 200 time improve because it's never really made sense to me why I can run 10.7, 10.6, but then can barely break 22 in the 200. So to me, if I improve my general endurance with regards to running by doing the 200s and 300s, and then I improve my specific endurance abilities with you know, short speed endurance, regular speed endurance work, and then eventually progress to special endurance later in the year, I think that'll help my 200 quite a bit and will probably help my 100 as well. So I wanna push myself a little bit, work a little bit harder, and I'm gonna start that by introducing low volumes of regular speed endurance work to help balance out all of the shorter sprinting I'm doing, as well as to balance out the longer, slower sprinting that I'm doing. And last but not least, like I said, I'm gonna be targeting maximal strength. So I've reintroduced the hex bar deadlift because I think that's a great maximal strength lift for athletes. It's a relatively safe movement as long as you do it with good technique. You can load it up pretty high. And I just need to get back to at least the maximal strength levels that I've had in the past, if not increase them to, to new levels. And by doing that, if you do it at the right time and in the right volumes and everything, that can help you a lot with becoming a more explosive athlete. If you want to accelerate faster, then you need to get stronger. It's not that doing the strength work is going to immediately make you run faster. In fact, it'll probably slow you down temporarily, but that's going to increase your overall abilities and raise the ceiling of how explosive you can be. If you never do maximal strength work, you cannot expect yourself to get much out of explosive strength work. So we use maximal strength during certain times of the year, and then we go to more explosive strength work at other times of the year, and the maximal strength work is really gonna raise your kind of your baseline of ability, and then from that you can build yourself into being a more explosive, faster athlete. And as sprinters, we have to overcome inertia at the beginning of the sprint. We have to get our body mass moving down the down the track. And since it's really hard to lose weight and maintain your performance, you know, the other thing that we can do is get stronger. So as long as we're using the right volumes, you know, not doing too many reps or anything like that, we're not going to get bigger. We're not going to gain a lot of muscle, but we will wire our nervous system to be able to produce more force, to produce more force early in the movement. And maximal strength is a great way to do that. And this is a good time of the year to introduce maximal strength. So anyways, that's the gist of what I'm going to be doing over the next few weeks. I might string it out to a six week cycle, but I'll probably stick with three weeks and then I'll debate either going back to an intensification cycle. If I feel like I still need more accumulation, I may repeat another accumulation cycle, but we'll see how things go and then you know make a game time decision then. I'll probably come out with a video talking about some recent training sessions so you can see more specific examples of what I'm doing each day, but this is kind of a general overview and since I don't wanna make a 20 minute video that people are only gonna watch half of it, uh, here's a slightly shorter video so you can get an idea of what an accumulation cycle might look like and then you can try to apply that to your training or you can join the online training group, hop along, 
and uh, join in with everybody else as we go through this cycle.